Uh, Mr. President, today I, I'm here to say that the world is watching Venezuela, and the United States Senate especially is watching human rights abuse in Venezuela. And I especially am watching the case of Leopoldo, Leopoldo Lopez, who has been in prison now for five months for what? For leading a political, for leading a political party and exercising his constitutional rights. Uh, Senator Menendez, the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, has spoken out about human rights abuse in Venezuela. Senator Corker, the ranking Republican on human rights abuse, has, uh, on foreign affairs, has, has spoken out about human rights abuse in Venezuela. Yesterday, Senator Cruz of Texas gave an impassioned speech about uh, Leopoldo Lopez in Venezuela and that conspicuous example of human rights abuse. Senator Rubio of Florida has been at the forefront of this discussion uh, with his leadership on the Foreign Relations, Relations Committee. And today, Mr. President, I would like to speak about human rights abuse in Venezuela and to say to President Maduro in Venezuela that the world is watching that abuse, the world is watching him and his efforts especially to imprison his principal political appointment, appoint, uh, opponent who is uh, Leopoldo Lopez. Mr. President, many of us have visited Robbins Island off uh, South Africa's coast. Uh, when my family and I did that a few years ago, it, it, there, there, there's no moment that impresses me more than that visit where some of those who were imprisoned there with Nelson Mandela still give tours of Robbins Island about where he lived and where he exercised, exercised and how he conducted himself in the 27 years uh, that he was there before he came back uh, and was freed and became one of the most important persons in our world history. It seems to me that President Maduro in Venezuela is determined to turn Leopoldo Lopez into the Nelson Mandela of Venezuela by his unconscionable imprisonment of him, principally because uh, Leopoldo has spoken out, uh, uh, has expressed his political views about the country that, that he loves. Leopoldo was born in Venezuela. He comes from a patriotic Venezuelan family. But he was educated in the United States, which is where I met him. I met him when he was a student at, student at Kenyon College. In fact, I made the graduation speech uh, when I was Secretary of Education to the class in which he graduated. And he was there a friend of my son, who was also a student. I've watched him over the years. He, 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 he went on to Harvard and, and obtained a master's degree there at the Kennedy School. He could have stayed in the United States and had a very successful career, but he chose instead to return to the country he loved, to Venezuela. He was elected mayor of a municipality there at the age of 28 in a, an important area outside of Caracas. Four years later, he was reelected with 81% of the vote. He is a rising star in Venezuela. There is no brighter star in the rising star in the skies in Venezuela. Hugo Chavez's government knew that someone like Leopoldo, who is well-educated, charismatic, purposeful, and honest with a desire to help his fellow Venezuelans, would do nothing but cause problems for their socialist government. So they barred him from running for public office and accused him of misusing political funds. Now, I suppose a lot of us would like to bar our principal opponent from running against us. The senator from New Jersey and I both are in elections this year, but hasn't occurred to us that in the United States we could actually do that. Elections are, are the lifeblood of this country and the lifeblood of our liberty and freedom, but is Venezuela. If you don't like your opponent, you just say you can't run for political office. That's what they did to Leopoldo. Leopoldo fought back, taking his case all the way to the Inter-American Court for Human Rights, and he won. I had the opportunity to see him again in 2011 when he, when he did that. I knew he would win his case. Uh, anyone who listened to it would believe that. He returned, he stayed in Venezuela. He faced assassination attempts, harassment, threats, never wavered in, 
in his call for Venezuelan people to take action against the repressive regime of Hugo Chavez and more recently, Nicolas Maduro. Venezuela is a rich country, Mr. President, has lots of money, but its people can't get toothpaste, its people can't get tissues. The inflation there is more than 50%. You would expect there to be a leader demanding change from the government, someone who could express the views of the people. Leopoldo is that person, but he's been in jail for five months. He's been barred from running for public office because he is that leader. He is a husband. He's a father of two young children. He chose to turn himself in to face trial. He could have come to the United States or some other country and said, I'm in exile. I'm a popular Venezuelan, and I'll take the brave act of going into exile. No, he didn't do that. He turned himself in with a crowd of hundreds of thousands of people because he, in the tradition of Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Mandela, and others, is, is focusing his resistance in a nonviolent and in a constitutional way. That is his lesson to the people of Venezuela. However, he's in jail for five months and President Maduro keeps him there to silence the opposition. So the president thinks. Leopoldo's trial is tomorrow. I say trial, although it's not a trial that we would recognize. The distinguished chairman of the Judiciary Committee is on the floor today. He's been a leading spokesman for human rights across the country. He too is interested in human rights abuse in Venezuela. He would not recognize this trial. The defense team of Leopoldo has attempted to bring forward 60 witnesses plus other experts to testify on their client's behalf despite a preliminary hearing or during a preliminary hearing every single witness for the defense was disqualified. There is a distinguished lawyer uh, from Massachusetts on the other side of the aisle. She knows what a trial is. She will recognize human abuse when she sees that just as all of us do. Just as all of us do. So I think it is important for President Maduro and the people of Venezuela, and the people in Venezuela who have been subjected to human rights abuse to know that that's not going unnoticed in the United States of America. That there are senators on the Democratic side and on the Republican side of the aisle who are paying close attention to this. That, that our State Department is reviewing this very, very carefully. That this sort of human rights abuse in Venezuela a country badly in need of political discourse and leadership is something we should not ignore. And we should say to President Maduro, free Leopoldo Lopez, free Leopoldo Lopez. By locking him up for five months, you are, you are not silencing him. You're not silencing him. You're helping make him the Nelson Mandela of Venezuela. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.